Hello and welcome to another episode of the Bogeyman Golf Podcast, proudly supported by AIG, a dedicated supporter for amateur golf in Ireland for over 25 years. Golf Ireland members can get an additional 10% off your car insurance when you go visit AIG.ie. In this episode, we look ahead to the AIG Men's Irish Close Amateur Championship, which is happening in Dunleary this weekend. I sat down with Justin Lowry and Gavin Loney to talk about hosting previous amateur championships, including the Curtis Cup in 2016, as well as how preparations are going for the competition this weekend. The AIG Men's Irish Amateur Close Championship is going to be here at the beautiful yep. Dunleary Golf Club this weekend. What's the, the timeline of hosting a competition sure. like that? Because these things don't just happen. A lot of work goes into it and a lot of course preparation, but also club preparation goes into it. What's the uh, the timeline for hosting the competition? So we, uh, I suppose we started talking to Golf Ireland back in um, 2021, 2022 with regard to the AAG finals, which okay. we hosted last year. And uh, at the same time as agreeing to host them, we agreed to host this uh, okay, great. close amateur championship. So it was a, a package of two events, I suppose. Um, of course, got a good test last year, went really well, great event. Um, so great run into this year and we're really looking forward to it. And how does the membership, so do you take that idea to the membership and say, listen guys, obviously we have teams playing in the, the Cups and Shields finals, uh, in the Cups and Shields competitions. This is another competition that Golf Ireland and AIG want to host. Do you have to run that by membership in terms of getting approval? I mean, you always consult your membership on these things, um, but generally our membership are very supportive of these events, um, particularly as they're such an active golfing membership yeah um, our members golf and they golf a lot it is a very busy course uh, with membership activities so it's it's not a small decision uh, but it's certainly one they get behind and they support um, and they're always very proud of what we produce after the weekends um, we tend to get a lot of good feedback which is great for them and great for us how big is the membership here so all included including all our juniors uh, we would have 1800 members it's a big club. That's a very big yeah. club. Yeah. So giving up your, your course, even if it's... Uh, you give up all, all three nines, I imagine, for the week off. No, no, that's the beauty of having the third nine, I guess. So um, the, we've closed the competition course this weekend, for uh, which is the upper middle, yeah. um, on Wednesday for preparation. And then practice round is Thursday, and then the competition's over the Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But uh, the nine hole, if you look at our timesheet, it is packed all day, every day with our members. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Okay, that, that's that's a nice kind of added element sure. for the membership that yeah. they're not necessarily giving away their entire course or all three courses yep. for for the tournament week. They can still get out play their nine holes, which is which is lovely. You alluded to it there the the championship course for the for the tournament will be the upper and middle. Yeah, could you just explain, I guess, the the differences between the three courses and, and then why it's going to be the upper middle over those uh, lower? Yeah, we ran the uh, AIG uh, All Ireland Finals were on the middle and lower last year. Um, and uh, I suppose the decision behind that was given the nature of the support that would be here for that event. Uh, both of the nine hole finishing holes are, are right here below the clubhouse. Mm. Um, it was felt that we wanted to offer a different test of golf for this event and the upper and the middle course were most suited to that. For people that haven't played Dunleary Golf Club or the, or the course before, what could they expect when it comes to playing the upper and, and middle? Um, a good challenge um, you know it can be forgiving enough off the tee but uh, there's plenty to watch out there plenty of hazards given the weather this week I think it'll be running quite fast um, and if the wind is up uh, it'll be a good test of golf uh, but a fair test I mean we always say that about Dunleer it is a fair test of golf you obviously mentioned hosting the Cups and Shields finals here previously sure. but you've hosted a number of amateur and international amateur competitions yeah. in 2016 the Curtis Cup was here and was a winning winning uh, Curtis Cup for the British and Irish team how special was that week because you came in 2013 just before that yeah so the club here in this guys opened in 2007 having moved from um, its original home in down in Dunleary and uh, they secured the Curtis Cup I think around 2012. Um, I started here in 2013 and preparations began pretty much immediately. So that was a big undertaking. 
um, a lot of membership involvement, um, a lot of working groups set up to make sure that we uh, did a good job. The LGU at the time ran that, ran that tournament, uh, they were excellent to work with. Um, so a lot of work, it went off fantastically and we're still very proud of, uh, of how we did that weekend. Uh, it was r record breaking crowds in terms yeah. of um, the, the attendance. You mm. said membership was was very active in terms of showing Hugely. their support. To go from uh, obviously hosting a number of events, then from the Curse Cup up to up to this week for the AIG Men's Irish Close. What goes into the preparation for, for the course? We were out here on on Saturday just doing a a recce getting out on the golf course. Yeah, the course looks to be in lovely condition. Yeah. How big is the greenskeeping team here and, and what goes into prepping the course for a championship? Yeah, we have a really dedicated, great team. Um, uh, and all these guys have been with us a long time. They know their stuff. Uh, Des McGann's our course superintendent. Um, has to be one of the best, if not the best in the country, what he does. Uh, so the course is always in premium condition, especially at this time of year. So as regards preparation for this particular event, um, other than I suppose some of the uh, finer detail uh, which they'll be embarking on this week um, you know when we have our own majors our captain's prizes our president's prizes etc the course mm. is always in tip top condition so you wouldn't expect uh, much of difference in, in regards to the presentation of the course from this weekend to any of those other major weekends I guess talking hypotheticals now because you probably haven't looked too much beyond but this weekend yep. you've hosted Curtis Cups AIG Cups and Shields so you've hosted amateur events at kind of club level yep. international level as well is there ambitions to host any more future elite amateur events either nationally or internationally yeah I think we'd always remain open to these uh, events um, I suppose we've had two years now it's been busy um, we we'll probably take a break for a year or two and we see what comes our way again um, I suppose we we ran a few of the uh, major ladies events this year and last year it's men's events, so we'll see where it goes for the in the next couple of years. Yeah, you've um, is it seven members playing in the in the field for the AIG yeah. men's Irish close? That must be um, something that the club is very very proud of. Really proud. I mean, it, that, it's fantastic. And uh, if I can, I'll name check them. But, yeah. uh, but to make sure I don't uh, miss any, I'm going to read them out. So we've obviously got Richie Sykes, Robert Abernathy, Colin Woodruff. Alan Fahey, Peter Kirby, Mark McKenna and Mark Nolan. So we're really proud that they've qualified for this. Yeah, and some really good, like, good names in terms of Alan Fahey is obviously like an Irish amateur yep. major like champion as well. Um, it must be great to see them either getting out here for practice weeks, but then also when it comes to actual tournament week. It must be great to see them. I'm sure they'll have, have big crowds behind them. Hopefully, yeah, I believe so. Weather's going to be good. Um, you w can't spend a better place now for the weekend, so we're looking forward to good crowds as well. For people that haven't seen the course or played the course before, hmm. what are kind of two ho two holes or a couple of holes, one in each nine, we'll say, that'll be crucial to, to scoring for whoever's going to go on to win this thing? I think the middle seventh, which is actually one of our newer holes, was redesigned a few years ago. A uh, spectacular looking par three, I think off the back sticks, uh, offers some interesting choices for pin positions. That's going to be... Um, that's going to be a bit of a tester for the guys, depending on the way how the wind is blowing. Uh, so that's, I suppose, one of the shorter holes. But uh, um, on the upper, you've got a couple of holes there. You've you've got the sixth and the seventh, I think. You know, tough green on the sixth, seventh will be all about positioning uh, off the tee and then the approach shot, I think. So uh, there's lots of good challenges out there, but I suppose we'll see what happens. What kind of category of golfer would do well here? Is it someone who's strong off the tee and hit it a long way? Or is it in a, a, an approach play, someone who hits their irons very, very well into tough pins? You know, you're going to have to place your drive. Um, there's usually bunkers protecting to get the fairways on either side, but they're big fairways. So if, if they can find the fairway, um, I think the approach shots. Uh, look, we have big greens here. Um, but you need to be near the pin. Sure. You know, so look, we'll see how it goes for them. So Gavin, thank you very much for coming on the podcast and having a chat with us. Um, the AIG Men's Irish Close Amateur Championship coming up this weekend. Big week for the club. Big week, I imagine, for yourself and for a few of your players. How has preparation been leading into this weekend? Uh, yeah, I mean, the golf course has been in great condition all year. So, um, I mean, and it's maintained to such a high standard week on week uh, that there isn't, you know, there's a there isn't as much preparation to do from that point of view as you might think. Um, there's obviously the finer touches, but uh, we have a great guy in Des McGann, and he's he's 
turns the course out so well every week. Um, the main thing is to try and pick some good, good fair pins and uh, then let the boys at it. I'd love to, if we could, before we get into chat about the mm. AIG uh, close, a little bit about your own background, how you got into to coaching and how, how you found golf in the first place. Uh, well, my dad was a member in the Curra and uh, I started caddying and then it wasn't long after that that I ditched caddying for sp- spending a couple of hours on the driving range <laughs> while he was out playing golf. Yeah. And uh, from there, obviously got, you know, totally taken by the game. Uh, Nice was on our doorstep, so it was the natural follow-on to join the local club. Maintained my relationship with the Curra uh, until I, pretty much until I turned pro as well. Uh, But Nice is where I grew up uh, playing my golf. Uh, Went to the States uh, uh, on scholarship, came back from there, then I worked in Ratsala, um, done my PGA training there, then I went coaching full-time, and within a year of doing that, uh, I was approached by Nace to, to become the professional there. And I was working with a lot of the young guys there at the time and uh, their junior program, helping them out with that for a few years. So, um, yeah, we, we all agreed terms. And, and uh, then we had, you know, 13 years in Nace, which was which was great. Uh, we we'd obviously had some very good successes there. Jack Hume, Conor O'Rourke, Jonathan Yates, uh, Rob Brazel then later mm. as well. And... Um, and the junior program there seems to have gone on from strength to strength. So uh, I'd like to think that we we set we set that in motion. Um, so yeah, it was uh, and that kind of arri- I arrived in Dunleary in 2020. Uh, I you know it was a for me it was uh, you know a, an opportunity to move to a big club, um, bigger challenges, um, see if I can do it again somewhere else. Um, the you know the facilities here are just superb, uh, as you as you've seen. So. Um, yeah, it was it was just a, an opportunity to take on a big challenge, um, and uh, yeah, I've, I've, I'm really enjoying it, and uh, yeah, the club's got a bright future, so I'm hoping to be a part of that. When you were doing your PGA, kind of came back from the states, did the idea of competing professionally attract you much? Yeah, it did. Um, I suppose uh, deep down, I, I I knew I probably wasn't good enough, and. Um, wasn't a hundred percent sure whether I wanted to make the sacrifices necessary to 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 see if it worked out. Um, I certainly loved golf. I, I I love golf. As I said to you earlier on, I I'd play every day if I could get away with it. But um, yeah, it was definitely an ambition to a point. And then you know, like a lot of guys who decide they're not going to play, it takes a couple of years to realise that. But uh, yeah, I mean, when I was over in the states, I I, I played Division One college golf, and I recognised very quickly that. I was going to struggle if I was to try and get to the next level, um, and when I came back, when I when I came back, I played amateur golf for a year and then played professional golf for a year, uh, and quickly made the decision I'm going to move into a different area of the game, okay. uh, and I'm glad I did. You know, I'm, I'm glad I did um, because you know coaching's given me an awful lot, and and uh, the profession's given me an awful lot. So yeah, it was certainly the right decision for me. From chatting to you before you hit record here, and and from a couple of pre- times previous, it does seem like you you love teaching. Yeah, I do. I love coaching people. I love trying to help young people get better. I mean, I I, I know what it's like to grow up wanting to be a, a tour pro, and you know, I spent a lot of my life trying to figure out why I didn't do better myself, and uh, hopefully, I can pass on experience and knowledge to to younger players uh, and help them on their journey and. Uh, I work with golfers uh, at every level of the game, but uh, and it doesn't matter whether it's a young per- young person who uh, is very talented and has lofty ambitions, or whether it's a weekend warrior who just wants to get their handicap down uh, or take some frustration out of the game. That you know, I'm, I'm you know that's the environment I feel I um, I thrive best in and I enjoy. You spoke about kind of developing the junior program in Nace and then coming over to Dunleary and and looking to you know r- repeat the repeat the process and repeat mm. the success. How important is junior golf and like, I guess like developing junior golfers and like, I guess even the love for golf at a junior age. How important is that to to you and I guess your your ethos when it comes to coaching? Well, I think like anything in life, if you're if you enjoy it, you'll be good at it. And I think it's important that kids play golf because they enjoy it um, I think if you have that that's a great starting point um, golf can be a very frustrating game and it's very easy to fall out of love with it as we all know so um, but yeah I, I think you know junior co- junior golf is so important um, 
for the development of the game in, in, in Ireland long term um, and every effort should be made to invest in it. Um, you know, we, we, we have to do our job as best we can um, and, and hopefully that's enough to encourage people to pursue their interests and ambitions beyond where they're at today. Well, how is the junior programme here in, in Dunleary? Well, it's really good. I mean, we, we, when, we, when I came in, I had to kind of look at what was there and, and what, what we needed to do going forward. So uh, my, my first goal was to try and get a good team around me of, of people to work with. Uh, and I have a, a great team, Catalina, Jason and Kyler, all experienced coaches. Um, Catalina worked in the States uh, at a number of different golf academies. Uh, and Kyle, my um, second assistant, he worked in uh, La Manga. He was coaching full-time. So they've coached full-time in the past. Wow. Uh, and Jason Conway from Donegal. Jason is... Um, is finishing up his final year as a PGA trainee uh, and he had coaching experience before he started that. So I wanted to get a good team around me first and then we wanted to put a coaching structure in, in place so that people were familiar with what we were doing, when we were doing it, the consistency of it. So get those wheels in motion. And we have that and we, we would have 50 to 60 juniors in coaching at any given time throughout the school year. Wow. So and we, we can build on that even further. Our next goal over the winter is then to look at it more in depth at what we're doing, how we're doing it, and maybe just to offer something a little bit different to people going forward, uh, kids who are maybe a little bit more serious about their golf, uh, what we can do to help them. Uh, but yeah, the, the coaching program that exists now uh, is available to everybody and caters for every, every age group. What do you see in, in a, a junior golfer or even kind of a young golfer Physically or athletically, as like aside from the, I guess if you see someone that loves the game, mm. you know that they love the game. And yeah, it's the kid who's always on the putting green or the chipping green yes. or whatever. That's the kind of kid that you go, all right, mm. cool, we'll we'll mm. be fine. But let's say for like a quiet, a quieter junior or someone that's yeah. just trying to develop, what do you see that you that you go right? That's something that we can we can build on as and make them a, a good player. I think first and foremost enthusiasm for it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I'm. I love to see, look out the window of the pro shop and see kids on the putting green playing competitions against each other, doing the same on the pitching green, out on the golf course. Mm. When I played, when I was a junior golfer, you know, I would play 45 holes in a day. Yeah. I, I, so enthusiasm is, is, everything. is, is the first thing. Yeah. Um, athleticism is really important. I mean, I'm a great believer that kids should play other sports. I think there are certain things you can't learn in the gym. There's certain agile movements that just simply come from playing hockey, playing hurling, playing football, playing basketball, yeah. baseball, uh, rugby. You know, there's certain athletic skills you learn in those sports that you cannot learn in a gym. And they're really, really important for young people to develop at, at, at the early age. And then, you know, once that athletic ability is developed, then the potential is enormous after that. Um, so yeah, I, I think enthusiasm and athleticism when you're young is absolutely key. And it opens so many doors to whatever sport you want to play. But if it's golf, then the same things you need playing golf are going to be the same things you need if you want to be good at any other sport, tennis or rugby or whatever it happens to be. So this is year four for you now in, in Dunleary. Have you seen a couple of, or a number of juniors come up to, to getting into the game, they're playing on teams. Obviously you've had senior cup success and there's the, the close now this weekend. Mm. You must have seen a few a few names kind of go up to the ranks and get onto teams and play club level. Yeah, I mean it's it's still in its infancy. I mean we started at the very bottom. When I say the bottom, the youngest age group. Um, so we don't elect juniors here until they're ten. Okay. Uh, so we started our junior program for the ju existing junior members at ten years of age. So we've kind of built it from the the ground up. Okay. Um, and as that filters through, we we will have more and more juniors who are improving, getting their handicap down, representing teams. But that takes time. You know, it, it took seven or eight years in NACE before that really came to fruition. Um, so you're about halfway through the kind of in the yeah, midpoint? Yeah, I would say with COVID and everything else, we're probably really only about two, two and a half years okay. into it. So it's very much in its infancy. Uh, and, and look, we, all we want to do is make sure that we provide the opportunity and that there are, is a structure in place if people want it, you know, and uh, fortunately there seems to be quite a bit of demand. The closest this weekend? Yep. 
uh, a couple of members are in the field, but seven members are in the field. Yeah. And I know that you've got a, a stable of, of amateur golfers who, who come from a variety of clubs. But um, talk about Mark Nolan. He's a member of the club. Yeah, Mark is someone I've worked with since I came to the club. My my uh, my wife actually helps him, him, him and his wife with uh, some personal training. Uh, Mark's wife, Helen, is a good golfer as well and very, very keen. Um, so, yeah, we've we've got to know them quite well. And, and uh, Mark's a really good player. You know, he's... I think someone referred to him as the as the professor. He's uh, tactically very good, brilliant short game, um, doesn't beat himself. Um, and yeah, you know, if who, any one of the seven guys can can do well this week, we're very lucky. There's a huge amount of talent within that group, and as you say, we've had some success at, at senior cup level. Uh, very close yesterday in, against Greystones. Uh, as I said, the match was very close. But uh, loads of talent, loads of ability, and, and just with a bit of a more experience of getting into some cutthroat matches. And mm. uh, yeah, we've been the wrong side of it a few times, but if we can learn from those experiences, we'll move on. And maybe this week could be the catalyst for some of that. You spoke about how much you, you love teaching and love coaching. You've got a number of players in your in your stable two of which are Keith Egan and, and Anna Foster, both mm. of whom won championships this mm. year. Must be really rewarding to see for, for them, and you must be delighted for them to, to see them get such titles under their belts. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, I, and I think f for the, you know, they're two very competitive golfers, and I think there's no substitute for winning. I think winning teaches you an awful lot. Um, there's nothing like going down the last hole, closing out a tournament. You don't get that if you're consistently finishing fifth every week. Uh, yeah. So I, I'm very, I try to impress the importance of winning, not because winning means everything, but it's what you learn from it. It's what you learn from when you don't win. Um, and, and both of them have had experiences of not winning, mm. coming close. Um, uh, but yeah, it was great to see them get it over the line this year. Nearly, Emma O'Driscoll, who works with me as well, nearly got it over the, the line there oh, yeah. a couple of weeks ago in Roscommon. Uh, it would have been great. Um, so, uh, but look, every year you, you start again and, and, you know, thankfully we've, uh, we've always had one or two wins most years. So it's been great. What kind of player will succeed here at, at the close in Dunleary? That's a great question. I think it le it's, it's wide open. I don't think distance is going to be a massive advantage. Okay. I think the golf course on paper pl looks long, but... I think it's quite manageable in its length and the way the length is distributed. Uh, the par threes are very strong. I think the par threes will be key. Um, there's there's potential there. I often say it about Baltre, you know, the secret's the, the par threes. If you get around there and level par for the four rounds, mm. uh, it's going to open up opportunities elsewhere. And I think here's probably the same. The greens are big, so it'll be easy to hit greens, but uh, long distance putting will be, will be tough. Um, we're quite high up here as well. So the the lie of the land is going to play a huge role in how you read putts and guys that have just guys that read putts really well and have good experience on the, on the, on reading greens on different courses and doing that really well. I think they'll have an advantage as they always do. Um, off the tee, it's it's generous to a to a point, uh, but there's some hay out there if if you're if you're far enough offline. But I don't think being uber straight is going to be. Uh, the biggest advantage this week I see it being the par threes and on the greens okay interesting um, 36 hole final day mm. it, it, is that a bit more of a would that suit someone who likes a marathon rather than a sprint finish or how does like it, it's, all, it's always interesting it's obviously with the with the yeah. east it's a similar format as well but then you have like if you look at the the south the, the match play side of it, it's very different the 36 hole final day would that suit someone who has a good third round and kind of can hold on to it or does the course play into someone be able to make a charge on the final 18 yeah I, th I think we've had our scratch cup here last year um, I think Rob Moran won it and he was two under par for two rounds and on the same setup that you know on a similar setup that, that's going to be here this week I don't think the golf course is going to lend itself to very low scoring okay. I think there is there's a 66 or 67 out there, but I don't think over the four rounds um, the scoring is going to be very low. Um, you know, 36 hole final day, it's going to be, it's if the weather stays good and it stays warm, uh, you know, fatigue will play a role. It's a walk, um, this course, all right. Like and it's, it's a walk, yeah. you know, um, like it's it's undu it's undulating. 
Um, it does a lot of walking in it. Uh, I was out there this morning with two of the guys, and uh, I carry. I was the only th one of the three carrying the bag, but uh, obviously not the smart one. But um, yeah, I, I, it's it, there's a it's a bit of a walk. So two rounds in one day around here will test anybody's uh, athleticism and, and physical fitness. Uh, if you could talk me through two holes, one on the front line, I guess the upper, and then one on the on the middle. What are two holes that'll be crucial to, to succeeding? You already mentioned the importance of the part threes here. Yeah, I think the seventh, our, our seventh hole in the middle, yeah. which will be, um, I think that, you know, that that's today um, it played about 180 water on the right. It plays into the wind, elevated tee box, so that can play havoc with the wind. Uh, that's going to be a big test. You know, I think getting through that hole every day in, in par, bogey at worst, um, will will bogey won't be... A bad score on that hole at times um, but again 180 into the wind with water and a big green there's so many different pin positions they can put out there that can make that hole play really really difficult and it's having the patience to say you know par's a good score here uh, and and get get the ball into the middle of the green and stay away from the the cheeky pins that tempt you into going for them you know it's uh, so the seventh hole I think is going to be that's a, that's a signature hole on that nine and I think that's going to be uh, play a big role um, and the next hole on that same nine is the par five, so there'll be risk and reward there. The water on the right hand side of the green really eats in, eats into the green if you're if you're too tight to the right on the on the entrance to the green. So two holes there that'll certainly play difficult on the middle. The upper course then there's a lot more undulation, so that I think putting on the on the upper nine is going to be a little bit trickier as we we were discussing out there this morning. Um, the Probably the hole, it's, it's not, in my opinion, I don't think it's the best hole on the course by any means, but I think it's going to be testing in its difficulty is the uh, the sixth on the upper. So there's about a 265 carry off the tee over fairway bunkers up the right-hand side, or you can go up the left-hand side, but you don't get as clear a shot to the green. That green is really, really treacherous. And if you find yourself on the wrong side of the hole there, um, that can play very, very difficult. If you're in play, if you're in the fairway, you can control your second shot into the green. It's not; it's a short hole, but if you're out of position, uh, a four there will will uh, you know will be worth it every day. Very nice. Well, isn't, um, best of luck in the preparation with yourself and your players for the, for the ARG Irish Men's Close. I'm sure we'll be talking to you at some point during the live stream. Might get, might rope you in for a bit of commentary or something like yeah. that as well. <laughs> no problem, Johnny. Brilliant. Listen, thank you very much. Thank you very much for everything you do too. Thank you. On the tee, Jack Nicholas. This is the minute the millions around the world have waited for. We will allow you to enjoy all of this. They are dancing in the pubs of Dublin. Harrington with an ace. And we have a shining star at sunset. Rory continues his run to greatness. The return to glory.